What is up everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the difference between buffered and unbuffered channels, when and when not to use them, because I see a lot of misconception uh, about this topic, a lot of people, even advanced Golang engineers, they still have no clue uh, what's the difference between a buffered and an unbuffered channel, why they have deadlocks, and that's why they always buffer their channels, come into my stream and they say, please Anthony, buffer your channels, and then I'm sitting here, what the hell are you talking about? Well, before we continue, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments and jump into the Discord community. And for the people that really wanna level up as a Golang engineer, check out my Patreon and let me know what you think about that. All right, so basically, uh, buffered and unbuffered channels. Uh, like I said, channels are very important in Golang. It's uh, the bread and butter of concurrency. You need to know how these things work, right? So basically, we're gonna say, we're gonna make a message channel and that's gonna be uh, make me a channel and we can make, it can be anything, we're gonna make integers uh, to keep it simple, right? And then we're gonna say message channel, what can we do with a channel? Well, we can do two things, we can write to a channel and we can read from a channel. Simple. Uh, so we have this message channel here, uh, we're gonna put 10 inside of it, right? This is basically the syntax for the people that don't know, the syntax to um, write a value to a channel, very simple, right? And then we can also read from that channel, so we can say uh, the message, right? We're gonna read from this uh, message channel. It's like this, and then we can, we can, we can print that out, right? You could say print ln, and we're gonna print out the message. Very simple, right? So uh, there is some problem here, but I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run the code anyway. Uh, go to main.go, and you can see we have a fatal error. All go routines are asleep. They are tired. <laughs> we are in a deadlock, right? And 100% um, uh, sure you already not noticed this, and you have no idea what's going on, right? Uh, and then you're basically thinking about this and you, 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 you will fix it yourself, but what you're gonna do is this, right? You just do this, you buffer your channel with a number you picked out of thin air, and then you basically do go run main.go and then it's all working fine and you're happy and you don't think about it uh, and you move on with your life. Pretty fine actually. Shit, my coffee is up, that's, that's a problem. Anyway, so, why do we have a deadlock here, right? If we run this once again, just to, to see this thing, boom. Fatal error, all go routines are asleep. <coughs> Why do we have a deadlock? Well, it's very simple because there is a very uh, rule of thumb in Golang, it's a semantic, and that is uh, about channels, is that a channel is always blocking if it's full. Let that sink in for a while. So a channel is always blocking if it's full. So you can all also have a blocking channel if you have a buffer channel, if it's full, <laughs> right? And uh, the problem is that a channel that is unbuffered is basically always full, if you think about that, right? Don't, don't, don't. Of course, there will be people and they, they will come with their, with their uh, theoretical uh, analysis and all that stuff, but leave that please at home. The thing is, I wanna teach you something and you need to think about that, that an unbuffered channel is always full. That basically means that here we are always blocking, right? We are always blocking because it's full. And that basically means that, um, how can I explain this? That basically means that we can only write to this channel if we have somebody that can put it out of the box because it's full, right? You could say, you could think about it like a cookie jar, right? Somebody wants to put a cookie into a cookie jar so somebody can, can, um, can take the cookie out of it. But we don't have a jar. Right? So we directly need to, instead of putting into a cookie jar, somebody else can, can take the cookie out of it. And in, in, in an unbuffered channel, we don't have the concept of a jar, of a, of a box, there is no such thing. So we have this cookie in our hand, right? And instead of pu putting it into the box, we need to give this directly to somebody that wants to eat the cookie, right? So we are basically here having this cookie in our hand and we are waiting for this guy, right? Because this guy is going to eat the cookie, eat the cookie, eat the cookie, the problem is we are blocking right here. So we will never eat the cookie, which basically means the program is stuck forever. We are in a deadlock, right? But if we buffer this channel, let we say 10, that basically means yo, instead of the concept of no cookie box, we have a cookie box and there is place for 10 cookies, right? So I have a cookie, I put that cookie into the box and call it a day. It's perfectly fine. We don't block because we have uh, space for 10 cookies and there is only just one cookie in it. And then this guy can basically come in whenever he wants, open up that jar and take the cookie out of it. That's that's basically the concept, right? Um, right, so let's delete the, the cookie box, right? So we're gonna delete the cookie box. Uh, and then of course we need to say that it's blocking right here, right? 
and then we're gonna run this again just to I don't know I just like to run run things so we have again this deadlock right that's because we have this cookie in our hand and we are waiting for uh, the other guy um, to eat the cookie but we are blocking so this guy basically sit there forever and we are in a deadlock right so how can we fix that we can fix it and we already uh, we already fixed it actually by buffering the channel Right? By, by creating some kind of a queue, a cookie jar where you can put the cookies in. But we can also basically make sure that um, the guy that's going to eat the cookie is basically already ready to eat the cookie. Right? Because right here, he's not ready because we are blocking here. So we can, he's in another room and the door is locked and we cannot notify him. So what we can do is basically copy this stuff. Right? And then we're going to say go funk. Uh, go funk just like this. And we're going to place this code inside of this GoFunk. What basically means is that uh, we're going to tell Golang from, yo, spin me up a new Go routine. Schedule me a new routine. It's not a threat. It's not a green threat. It's basically, it's a Go routine, right? So we're going to spin up this Go routine. And uh, which basically we're going to say to the guy, hey, yo, be ready, right? Put yourself there because I'm coming with this cookie and you're going to eat it. Right? And that's going to work perfectly fine because we are blocking here. But that doesn't matter, right? It doesn't really matter because we are here ready to read from the channel. We are ready to take the cookie and eat it. I'm getting hungry by talking about these cookies. So we're going to say go or may not go. Boom. And you see it's working perfectly fine. Although our channel is not even perfect, right? It's an unbuffered channel. Um, which is basically means it's always actually full, right? There, there, there always needs to be somebody on the other side eating from it, right? Uh, eating from it, reading from it, <laughs> if you know what I mean, right? So the question is, when do we use a buffer channel and when do we use an unbuffer channel? Well, the thing is, of course, that uh, it depends. It's, it's a use case, right? So let's put it back here, right? So let's say, in this case, we are we are basically rigging our own program. And what do I mean by that is we know exactly what's going on, right? Uh, it's a simple main function, and of course, everything is simple in programming, right? Every tutorial is simple until scale is coming to play, right? Until there is some, some, some source of complexity, until there is some source of scale, then the whole game changes, right? Then, then everybody's choking, right? Because they don't know what to do. It's completely fine, right? It's... It's um, the common programming paradigm. Everything works perfectly fine until there is scale, All right? But the thing is, um, when do we? When do you need to use a buffer channel? Well, you need to need you need to use a buffer channel if you're not 100% sure if your reader is going to be reading before you're actually going to write. That's one of the use cases. Because right now, if we let's let's go back actually, uh, let's go back to this GoFunk, right? Right now, we basically rigged our own program. We are basically hundred percent sure that this guy is going to read. Is going to be ready to read from this channel. Actually, reading before we actually writing, right? So the channel will never be full, will never be blocking because there is always somebody on the other side eating the cookie. But you can imagine if you make a program that there's a lot of stuff going on, there is a lot of may maybe some TCP connections and some, um, some stuff that needs to happen. And sometimes it could be that this guy is ready to read from the channel, but sometimes he's not ready. Maybe sometimes uh, writing to the channel will happen before you're actually going to read from the channel. And then you can have problems because then you will have a deadlock uh, at, 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 at that point. And using a buffer channel will always make sure that um, there is a cookie box. Will always make sure that the channel will never block, regardless of somebody on the other end uh, reading from it or eating from the uh, or eating the cookie. If you know what I mean, right? Uh, you need to think about also that um, sometimes it could take some time to process your. Not always, but uh, it's like I said. I'm not going to make it too complex because it's going to kill your dopamine system, uh, your dopamine levels. But you need to understand that sometimes it could take some time to process that message. And what happens is that uh, you're gonna block until that's basically gone, right? And if you use some kind of a queue system, which basically means that each, if you if you buffer your channel here with, I don't know, uh, BB, 
pick some pick some number, right? It doesn't really matter. It basically means that you're gonna just write and forget, right? It's just gonna write to this channel, and it doesn't it, it doesn't matter who's on the other side because there is a box and you can there is a queue and you can put as much messages in there until, of course, this is full, right? Just think about it as a message queue in in, in that thing, right? So what I'm always doing basically is uh, I'm always trying to use an unbuffered channel uh, until I need to uh, until I need to buffer it, right? That's is it a good practice? Is it a bad practice? I don't I have no clue. You tell me. Leave leave that in the comments, right? But I'm always starting out uh, with an unbuffered channel unless I'm pretty sure I need a I need a I need a buffer channel, right? It is what it is, right? But just very important to understand is that a channel in Golang will always block if it's full. So an unbuffered channel is basically always full. So there always needs to be somebody reading on the other side, right? And an unbuffered channel is basically, think about it as a cookie box um, with a space of thousand, right? Space of thousand cookies. And um, it will never block until, until that cookie jar is completely full with thousand cookies. Of course, you're gonna have somebody eating these cookies, right? Um, and so basically you're going to have, you're going to have a queue system, right? So when do, what, what's the, the number you need to pick here? Uh, well, it depends actually. It completely depends. There is no, no right answer, right? So you need to experiment with that. All right. So uh, a very simple, short video. And I hope this cookie, uh, thingy helped you think about how this actually works, why you have a deadlock and how you can fix your deadlock, right? Uh, so that's it. If you like this video, if you like the content I'm providing to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments. Jump into the Discord community, and I'm looking forward to see you in one of my future videos or live streams. Peace.